So today we're going to look at some uh, gain scheduling. And uh, the gain scheduling will be on one axis with respect to the position of some other axes. Um, normally, we, when we do gain scheduling, we do it on the axes uh, that we're driving. But to figure out where we are in the coordinate system on, on a robot, it's, it's a little more complicated to do all that on the drive. So that's something we would do on, a, on the master. Um, the, uh, the master that we're going to use is the CML C++ source code master. So, you know, eventually we'll, we'll get the position of the B axis and use it to change the gain scheduling on the A. Um, but for purposes today, we're just going to keep it simple and see how the gain scheduling works to change uh, change a gain based on a parameter. Could be velocity, could be position, could be a key parameter uh, or, or a keying parameter. And so the basic uh, capability of uh, CML is XY coordinate system path planning. Uh, is there's, at, at this point, there's no Jacobian matrix in there for inverse kinematics. So we have to define our own uh, mathematics and, and, and do this some stuff on the computer, which is maybe a more, more challenging for the drive. Um, but the, the, the initial tuning would be done uh, making trap and S curve moves. And then you can see that the um, we can also make asymmetrical S-curve moves from CML. It's in the source code. You set the XL and the D cell to different values, and it doesn't have to be symmetrical like the drive because, well, the drive's got a limited processor, and you can do more stuff on a computer. Um, <clears throat> so the basic problem here is uh, as I rotate uh, around an axis, I have a, a center of mass. And, and that center of mass depends on the distance you are from the origin. And the inertia is uh, based on the formula, you know, the mass, the center of mass times the, the radius squared would, would be the inertia of the load. And so here in this system, we can see that the tuning with the low inertia when the arm is tucked in, uh, the proportional gain is high. And then as we move the arm out, the proportional gain is low as the center of mass moves out it's the square of the radius. So we need to adjust the proportional gain based on the position of the B axis um, and adjust the gain in the A. We could also have a gain schedule for the B axis too, because maybe we want both gains to be low. Um, so we could set, you know, the key parameter on both based on the X, Y coordinate of, of the output. And so here is just showing the can open capability of, you know, here's a, a PDO 60, 30, uh, 60, 63, which is the position of the A or the B axes. So you would have two parameters mapped to transmit, say, every 10 milliseconds, the position that the arm is in. You do some math and you figure out where you are and, and, and what's your inertia. And then you can scale the gain based on your position. Again, the position of B will affect the gain sc scaler in A. I can also do B too. Um, so just sort of the basic idea is uh, we create a gain schedule with the keying parameter. It says use written parameter here. And we're gonna change the proportional gain in this. We could do other gains and parameters too, but just to keep it simple, I've selected three values. Uh, you know, when the keying parameter is zero, the gain will be 200 say. Uh, when the keying value is uh, 50, It'll, it'll be 100, and when the keying parameter is 100, it, it, the gain will be 20. So again, other gains. And, and so the, the, when, we, when we write to this parameter a value of zero, the proportional gain will be 200. When we write 50, it'll be 100. That the drive will do the linear interpolation, so I can set the value to like one or two, and then the gain will come down in a linear form. Right, and if you need to scale something parabolically, you don't make it so linear in your entered values. You make a parabolic several points. You don't have to go crazy. We'll do the linear interpolation in between them, but there'll be sufficient points to do the uh, interpolation to get your gain scaled 
more effectively. And in ASCII, it's 0x128, and in CAN, it's a 2371 object, and you can see the value is a plus or a minus number. I'm going to use a value from 0 to 100. And so you can just write that into the drive's memory. And again, uh, one parameter would be for the A axis, the other would be for the B axis, just like you could get the position of any axis in even a six joint robot, right? And then you can figure out the center of mass based on which axis you're trying to affect the gain scale on. So let's take a look at uh, the motor here. It's just uh, rotating back and forth with, I added some inertia. A center of mass is out here somewhere. Um, and it's a little bouncy, you know, with some uh, load inertia attached to the motor shaft inertia. And I'm using a two axis drive, which is very beneficial for kind of a robot with two joints. So you can do a lot of things in the drive that you don't have to do in the master or in the master, like CML, you can do the gain scheduling based on the position of the other axes. And this is a Zenith uh, two axes. I'm hooked up to an Excelnet two axes. Um, so let's take a look at CME and uh, we can see we're making some moves and uh, let's open up. You know, we really can't see the bounciness here um, when we move and settle, but we can measure it. So there's some error after the move is done, there's still a bounce. So the jerk four times per the move, bounce, 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 time to settle. And we're going to try to affect the bounciness of this by adjusting the, the gain. So here's my trajectory, nice and slow, big, big load. It's already tuned for current velocity. And I've got some position loop gain. So my proportional gain is cranked up for no load case. It should be a thousand for no load. Um, but just to show the effect of the gain schedule, I've over cranked it up. So and I've detuned the velocity loop to get a bounce in this system. It was it was hard to get a bounce here, but under amplifier gain schedule, we can see we can write to the keying parameters. We can disable it. It could be based on the velocity, the actual velocity, the position, the commanded position of this axis. And so this is I'm doing the A axis. I could have as well done the B axis, and I would have to write to the the correct keying parameter, but I'm gonna change the proportional gain. We could add other gains like the, the I term and the D term, and I don't see the feed forward term, but oh, there's gravity, current offset. So, you know, if, you're got, if you're fighting gravity, this system is not affected by gravity because it's rotating uh, on the horizontal plane, not the uh, vertical plane. <clears throat> Uh, so the table, I've, I've added some steps here at three, and then I started entering some values. So zero would be 2,000, 50 would be 200, 100 would be 20. If I set it to something between zero and 50, like two, it would be like some percentage less of that. So from zero to 100%, basically. Um, so let's take a look at the, uh, the gain schedule is now saved to the flash. Uh, I press the save to flash button on there. And if I adjust the keying parameter, uh, if I go to 50, you see the, the proportional gain changed to 200. And you can see the effect of uh, decreased proportional gain. Uh, it's lost some, some stiffness, but it, it sure does settle nicely and it's less uh, bouncy. Um, I could just affect. Uh, uh, from zero to 50 is 25. I think that's about a thousand. So, um, maybe a little bit less. So yeah, the gains are too high with the load attached. So you really gotta, you gotta turn the gain down. Try a value of 75 there. Let's do a hundred, 110 for PP. And that's more like it. So if the inertia mismatch is like, you know, if it's one to one, you know, a thousand for PP is good. If it's like 10 times bigger than the motor inertia, maybe a hundred for PP. If it's, you know, a hundred times bigger, gee, maybe we got 10 for PP, right? And so as the load inertia exceeds the motor inertia, we got to keep dialing that proportional gain down 
And again, like the current loops, the kilohertz, the velocity loop, I don't know, 100 hertz, 300 hertz, 500 hertz, whatever you can tune it to for maximum stiffness without buzzing. Um, so we can, we can see how the gain scheduling parameter, keying parameter works. And then um, the idea is in, in CML, we would uh, first read the position of the, of the joints, do some math, figure out what we want the, you know, where is it and what the, what the PP should be. Uh, and then we would write down to the, uh, the keying parameter, a value uh, that, would, that would affect uh, the A and the B, but read the position of the B in this application because, you know, this, the, the A, the A cares where the B put, put the inertia, right? So, so that's why we're looking at the B position to affect the gain schedule on A. But we could also have a gain schedule for the B axes and turn the PP down for that one too. But, you know, two, two axes separately or even together still need to be affected with the, their own keying parameter. And uh, we have a minute left, so we'll talk about uh, robotic type solutions. So there's the Zenus and the Excelnet panel uh, with connectors. For the OEM that's going to build a thousand, maybe you buy a two axis uh, Excelnet module or a three axis uh, multi axis series. So two, two of these are like can be a pair with cross coupling and uh, you know working together. I suppose a, a program in the drive could be written, but there's a lot of math associated with locating the position of joints. And then uh, as, as we, you know, we have this uh, Excelnet AEV APV drive for can opener EtherCAT. All these are can opener EtherCAT. Um, these can use uh, inner drive comm to talk to each other to build a dual axis so we can get cross coupling with a pair of these or a pair of nano pluses. Um, these are single axes. Uh, for, for, for joints, um, and nano is good for a joint, and the Argus is kind of big, but good for the, the base or the body. Um, so there's some basic uh, applications for robotics, and this one's a gripper, so at the end of the robot, open and close a gripper uh, with controlled force, and so all that's pushed into the drive. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Bye.